Is everything okay? Everything is perfect. Yeah, you're all looking good. good. Yeah. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this international meeting with OFA, where I'm joined by my amazing colleagues from the Far East. So I have Dr. Kyungkook Hong, who is a dermatologist from Seoul. Just wave out to us, Kyungkook. Hello. And nice to meet you, everyone. Dr. Ting Song Lim, who's a aesthetic physician from Malaysia. Wave out, Ting Song. Hello, hi. And Dr. Shangli Lin, who is a dermatologist from Taiwan. Hello, everyone. Excellent. So we're all gathered today because we'd like to learn from the East and be able to go back to our aesthetic practices, feeling a little more relaxed because, you know, everybody is very nervous right now um, in UK about going back to the aesthetic practice and what safety measures they should be taking. And there are a lot of consensus papers, in fact, two consensus papers that have been uh, published in the last two weeks. But I think the practical experience is really important and I'd like for you all to share your uh, practical experience. So I'm going mm -hmm. to start with Dr. Shangli Lin because I think Taiwan got on top of it very quickly. So uh, Shangli, would you like to share your experience of what you do to keep your clinic safe? What safety measures you're taking when you're seeing patients and treating patients? Okay, um, we are a little bit luckier that we have um, on a small numbers of cases that for the past few months, uh, we have um, incorporated a, a, a quite a lot of details into our daily routines that uh, to make sure um, the uh, every patient is safe um, when they come to the clinic. So in, when the patient step into the clinic, we um, take the temperatures first. And uh, um, because uh, when we insert our insurance card, the database is directly connected with the database with Im of uh, immigration. So we are able to check the patient's history for the past a few months. Um, so if the patients um, can just came from... Um, came from other countries within um, 14 days, um, we will um, prefer them to come back um, when after 14 days. And uh, um, if they are waiting in the lobby, um, we are uh, we will request them to um, keep the social distancing. And then um, um, if they come into the consultation room, as long as they leave, we will clean uh, the seats immediately and uh, we will increase, also increasing, um, increase the frequency of cleaning of uh, the objects in the in our clinic, including the doorknobs, um, the staircase, or the handrails that the the patients may may have touched. Um, and we will clean them immediately. And after after each patient, we clean uh, after each treatment, we also uh, clean the seats and also the bed of the patient. Um, so that we are um, eliminate the possibility of uh, contamination. Okay, fantastic. And Kyungkook, what are you all doing in Seoul? Okay, uh, unfortunately, in Korea, we were very good at quarantine, so we didn't have uh, much of the patient, so we didn't close the clinic during the peak period of the corona epidemic. So it was lucky for us. But I think I heard that and I got a lot of message or news about how we manage the corona or how we are doing the, our clinic during the corona period. But I think uh, actually we did only very small things. For example, um, clean, cleansing, disinfection, and wearing a mask. And wash your hands often. Use hand sanitizer. I think that's all, because okay. all we things are all our you know how can I say um, daily life is based on the trust that uh, the person who are moving around are safe. Right. So actually, we didn't do a lot of things. The only things that we can do for this corona was. Um, Taking, wearing a mask, or check the temperature. Only very small things. Okay. So, 
So, mm. uh, but that's because the community spread was very low. Now, Ting Song, give us yeah, your experience. I, I know you're just hobbling out of lockdown like UK is. Right. Uh, so, there right. is quite a significant degree of community spread in Malaysia versus Seoul and Taiwan. Exactly. So, basically, I think um, we are pretty similar to what Xiangli has mentioned earlier. We do a uh, pre-screening. Um, before they come into the clinic, we actually have questions, making sure that they are actually asymptomatic or they are actually haven't been traveling to somewhere riskier or haven't been doing anything that could possibly contact with uh, any kind of COVID-19 viruses. And when they come in, we do get temperature. They, they get temperature checked. They actually have to sign in. And also we adopted one patient, one room at one time. We minimized the contact. Um, every one of us is wearing face masks and a face shield with gloves. We make sure that every time after any kind of contact, we do the disinfectant, uh, uh, just like what Shang Li and Yongku has been uh, mentioning. And of course, we change the bait sheet and make sure that everything is clean. Okay, fantastic. So can I just ask, because obviously there's this big thing about masks and I've got a mask here. Uh, what, what, is the, what are the masks you're wearing and what are you asking your patients to wear when they come in? So Ting Song, you go first. Yeah, basically I think a three-ply surgical mask is what we are doing. Unless we felt that there's uh, some kind of treatment or some kind of um, sort of condition that we need something more than that, uh, like an N95. But on that, I think that um, every one of us is wearing a three-ply surgical mask, including the patients. I think here, uh, probably Shang Li and Kyung Koo will also mention in Asia, um, people are actually very, um, they are compliant to us wearing masks. Even outside in the street, you see most of them are wearing, if you are not wearing, people actually kind of look at you as if you are not doing your part. Yeah. Okay. So, Shangli, what about you? What are the masks you are wearing, you and your staff, and then your patients? Yes. Um, actually, um, almost all the citizens they wear similar um, medical masks. Um, because um, the government, uh, since the beginning, the government has um, taken over all the manufacturers and has been rationalizing um, the, the, the delivery and the purchasing um, of um, the masks. So um, we, um, every now, every two weeks, every citizen are able to get um, the masks, nine, nine masks um, for, the, for the whole two weeks. So we are able to go to the um, 7-Eleven to um, claim our masks. Ah, uh, so fantastic. You have masks of different colors. That's white mask. That's um, blue mask. <laughs> and also uh, you have got these zebra masks. Oh, nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to bring out the animal yeah. in you. <laughs> yeah, depending on uh, which party you are going to. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah I, so, um, I bought a whole load of cloth masks with different things with lips on it and you know uh, yeah. just so that when I'm wearing it in clinic at least you know there's some sort of engagement yeah so um, so when you when you are taking the um, um, the the subway train uh, you, you everyone is required to, to wear a mask and uh, also um, even if you go to the department store you go to the banks uh, you cannot enter without wearing a mask. So um, the the restrictions about wearing masks are quite uh, strict in order to protect each other. So in the clinic, it's similar. Uh, the patients only take off the mask when necessary. Uh, for example, um, um, receiving the treatment or uh, doing consultation, um, do the uh, doing the assessment of the face, etc. Okay. And what about you, Kyung Kook? What are you all doing with the mask situation? Uh, because there was a, a little panic sale for about the mask for the first time in Korea. So the government decided to provide a mask by themselves. So all the Koreans could buy the mask every week, depending on the date. So maybe we could buy around uh, two masks per week for every people. So I think in that 
uh, fact, the government did very well. So, but I think the more important things than wearing the mask is quarantine for the possible infected patient or the persons who contact with the infected patients. I think that's the work of the government and I think they did very well. So we could do our daily life under the pres uh, prism that the old people who hang around are basically healthy. Okay. So I think we can do carry on our, you know, the clinics. That's fantastic. Can I just come back to the masks? Because here, you know, the government has obviously been very slow. They're not providing masks. And we've all had to source out our own PPE. And in fact, we've been ordering it from Korea and China and waiting three, three, four, four weeks to get some masks. But basically, the government has told us to wear face coverings, which is, you know, you can wear stockings, socks, anything. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that this is a big... Uh, you know, big fudge factor because a lot of people are still not wearing masks in the West. And so for my patients, I tell them that if you are coming into the clinic when we reopen, uh, you are going to have to wear a mask and come and we are all going to be in masks. So we, you know, we've made it mandatory for our patients to, to wear masks. Um, can I just ask about reusing the mask? Because it's interesting, you all said your government gives you nine every two weeks in Taiwan and uh, Kyungkook, you said your government supplies you with masks, but we're told you, you know, about the reuse because when masks are in such short supply, do you all in your clinic use this over one session or do you use a disposable one per patient? Shangli, you go first. Okay. Um, here um, in Taiwan, almost everyone use um, the same mask for the, for the whole day. And the next day, um, they will um, um, they will they will dispose um, the, the the old mask and they wearing a new or new one. And um, um, a few weeks ago, um, the government also teach people how to um, sanitize um, the used mask. Um, for example, to um, put into the steaming pot. Um, like like the pot we steam the rice, yeah. um, for, um, but without wow. adding any water, it's, all, it's only dry. And um, you put the, the max into the steaming pot for 15 minutes. And um, um, they, they tested that um, and uh, it is uh, completely um, sanitized. So, Fantastic. It's like um, a home autoclave. One way. It's like it's a home autoclave. Yeah. Wow. What, what's that? I said it's like a home autoclave. Because you, yeah, you're yeah, steaming yeah. it, <laughs> yeah, exactly, dry exactly. steaming it. It's like autoclave, yeah, yeah. So it's also one way to reuse the mask and uh, um, they, they have um, tested and it's, it's safe. So uh, by using um, the mask in this way, uh, the mask can be reused at least uh, three to five times. Fantastic, Shangli. Would you be able to send us a link uh, on how yeah. we can do that? Because obviously in our country, there's a huge shortage of masks. And okay, sure. uh, it just means that you can reuse the mask. And I think it'll be very useful for aesthetic practitioners. So yeah, can I just sure. ask, is anybody wearing this shield? Because I know, Shangli, you sent me a video on how I could make it. Yeah. And then, of yeah. course, it started becoming available because, you know, Shangli was giving me advice very early into the pandemic. So is anybody wearing this on top of their masks? Yes, uh, we are. Yes. Um, here, only only the receptionist <laughs> of our clinic wears that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, in, in the consultation in the consultation room, we don't actually wear that. Yeah. Okay. So, and what about you, Kang Kyungkook? Are you wearing these face visors or face ma You know, no, shields? No, no, I, di I I didn't use that. I didn't use that. Okay. And I use I only wearing a mask during the treatment or during the consultation, and we use that. Usually one day. Okay. A mask. I've got a peak and we have, uh, you know, we've come out of lockdown, but not all the clinics have reopened because the government is staggering the opening of the clinics. So our community right. spread has dropped. The, the worry yeah. we have is that because people are not still wearing masks because of this um, confusion, the government guidelines are very confused and they've just said face coverings. There's not enough masks. Right. There's no contact tracing. 
and there is uh, no widespread testing that we are afraid of a second peak mm -hmm. right so already our economy has suffered because imagine being shut for 9 weeks completely and now right. we're staggering back so the economy is shut but we're staggering back because the economy is shut you know and mm -hmm. Certain parts of UK still have a high community spread like Manchester, Birmingham, which were behind London. But right. London, we've reduced the community spread. So we may not have a problem for three, four weeks. But if the population continues to not be careful, then we will see that second peak. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what we're worried about. And, you know, going back to work safely. So that's going to bring me back to just uh, tests. So, you know, here, because the government has been very slow on testing, there are a lot of private companies that are offering lots of tests and there's a lot of confusion about mm -hmm. the, the sensitivity of the tests. So that means there are a lot of high false negatives. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so here we are going to start clinics presuming that every patient is an asymptomatic COVID-19 carrier. So we are going to follow stringent, you know, pre-screening, uh, no travel, uh, patients coming in for 14 days, temperature checks. Uh, like my clinic is also going to give them shoe covers so that when they walk in, they've got shoe covers on. But I just wanted yes. to ask about the filtration <coughs> systems in the clinic. Do you all have any special filtration systems? Uh, do you all have any special HEPA filters, vacuum filters? No, no, we don't have. We don't have. Okay. And what about you, yeah. uh, Shangli? <laughs> Taiwan? Uh, no, we just uh, clean uh, as frequent as possible um, and uh, use the bleach to clean them um, all the path or the, 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 um, the uh, aisles that the patient uh, could walk by. And that's pretty much all of it. Okay. And uh, Ting Song, what about y'all? Have y'all got any? Well, similarly here, we, we don't use HEPA filter. We are not big into trying to actually use like uh, ozone or all sorts of uh, ways to kind of clean the room. But we do disinfect the areas that might be uh, touched or being used. We make sure that those areas are disinfected, just like what Shangri has shared earlier. Okay. And then here, there's this whole thing going on with this blaster that blasts the whole room with a spray of disinfectant. Is this something that you all have incorporated or not really? No. Yeah. So I think people are going into real overdrive, you know, all the clinics in terms of uh, how they can keep themselves safe. And they're almost cleaning their clinics like you would have train a public transport train, which is not necessary because if you're doing the pre-screening and you've got the masks and you're doing the disinfection, um, you're, you know, you shouldn't really be uh, as if you were traveling on public transport. Can I just exactly. ask, uh, Shangli, has there been a reduction in the type of procedures or the aesthetic treatments that patients are choosing because of this recession? Um, yeah, there is a generally reduced number of uh, patients um, for aesthetic treatments. There's no particular type of um, reduction in number, but generally um, patients tend to, um, you know, spend less money and save money for the rainy days and they uh, we would prefer to use um, the, the the purchase or the, the, the treatment that they have already purchased, purchased. instead 